uh, in this video we are still uh, in, in transition between like, uh, the DOM model and canvas model, right? And what's left to do is um, implement the hover system, right? So in DOM you just uh, can put on hover um, any element and get the event back when the mouse is actually uh, over that element and it, when it leaves that element. Right, and but on canvas there are no DOM, so you have to implement that yourself. And actually, it's a good thing because uh, in, uh, in in previous implementation we actually did a kind of foreign thing because we we put together um, the rendering here and hovering system. Right, so the rendering should only uh, should have only rendered sprites, but should not bother with making stacks uh, hovered or selected, right? So this is a different system. And actually, yes, so this is a good thing that we had to re-implement that. We actually won't need any of that, so it's time to this to go. Uh, let's start by creating a new system. Let's call it, um, well, let's call it hover, I guess. Or maybe let's call it input, yes, yes. Animation we probably don't need. It's strange why we do need animation. We probably need any, not need animation here as well. Yeah, I I, I know why, why we used to need the animation there. Okay, so this is going to be like input.clgc. And you see what it, uh, Sublime does. So it appends CLG suffix to all CLGC, CLGS, sorry. Um, yeah, so, um, so the first thing actually i am gonna rename those to reload instead yes and maybe in a name or in a name we don't want that uh, yeah that is fine for now um yeah this is one thing the other thing that I thought that I should have done is this. It should be just request animation frame, right? And this should be a callback. So we should only render on request animation frame. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's true. I hope it works. Hope it works. Anyways, so uh, we have new system input now, and what? Well, let's also do this reload thing, right? So uh, we do something on reload. I don't know what yet, but we want to import that. This probably goes here, and we do. Input reload, input reload, right? So this should work. Yeah, it seems to work. Okay, great. So uh, let's start by defining on mouse move handler, right? And hmm, actually, I'm starting to think that yeah, we'll probably depend on render, which is not that bad, I think, at least on. Some global variables from there. It's I think it's fine, depending on on, on that part. Um, yeah, let's see. So now smooth. So our first task would be oops, to see if we can translate the coordinates. So we will get the coordinates in screen space. And we want in them in logical space, right? So this should be zero, zero. This should be like scaled back down and, and so on, right? So uh, in reload, we are going to do this just window on mouse move. On mouse move, right? So uh, this is what we are going to do. Let's see, let's bring up console. Let's see, yeah, so it prints something, but you see if you go here, 
It's actually not zero, zero, way, way off, right? So uh, let's start by uh, saving those as X and Y. Maybe actually I should do that. Um, hmm. Maybe we should do that here. And yeah, why not? Yeah, let's implement a method called def um, screen. Window to screen. Like we take one pause, which is uh, gonna be yes, this one, and we are going to. So what we have to do is to convert from window coordinate to the screen coordinate, right? And yeah, I actually did something. I I actually made a couple of constants. So one is screen dimension, which is like a fixed dimension of this uh, rectangle the screen. Right, the other one, when we resize the window, I also uh, calculate the coordinate of screen pos of this of this thing. It's, uh, well, it's difference between the whole width and the width of the inner one divided by half, right? So it's, it's pretty simple and it made actually a couple of things simpler, like here I'm just using this screen pos. So uh, for now, so first thing that we need is scale, right? So let's say... Uh, we have uh, well, we have dim, which is window dim. Oh, we actually need not the dim itself, but uh, keys from it. And one of the keys is scale, right? So yeah, and so we have x would be quote x from pos by scale. And y is going to be the code. Well, I think I am going to do it like this so that you can see. So we take x, we code by scale, right? And y will probably do later. Now, after that, we have to we have to minus. Something like that, right? And this is our result. Okay, so this this should be W pulse, for example. So this is this. And we should do it like that. Here we use Y from and uh, here we use Y. Um, yes, yeah, so like that, so window to screen, um, render, window to screen, pause, this, this, this. Let's see what we get. So the words and yeah, I have to scroll back. So here we get uh, 320 by 175 and around here we get, oh, let's see. Oh we, yeah, we, we, we are pretty close to zero, I say. So it seems fine, right? So here we have X, Y, yeah. So I think it does the right, does the right thing. So now let, so we have screen pause right now, yes. Uh, we don't do anything with it yet. So our input system would be like, uh, what, what should we do with it, right? So what should we do is we should iterate over each sprite here, right? Well, actually we should iterate over each stack. Um, hmm. Well, yeah, let's iterate over each sprite and for each sprite, we have this position, right? So this sprite slash pos is uh, for, for, for this guy, it's uh, center and bottom. It's the center of the bottom, right? And the sprite rectangle is quite big because we can draw a lot, but the hover rectangle is much smaller. So uh, we have to calculate the hover rectangle for sprite. And then we have to check if our mouse 
is within this color rectangle. So yeah, this is pretty simple, right? So let's say we have, um, well, let's iterate, let's first, so first we go to the model, where is model? Now we go to the model and check schema. So we have sprite slash plus right, right here. So we can do what we can do is datum uh, is ds datums. Oh, we need the database here as well. So database is gonna be model slash start db. Right? Um, why is my notebook so hot? Is, what is it doing? I, I wonder. It just renders. It's out. It's just rendering. Huh. Okay. Let's let's close it for now. Maybe it will be quite why we write it, right? Okay, so we need DB, we need IEVT index, right? And then we need well we are going to use sprite such possible. Okay, so this gives us all datums that with, which have uh, this coordinate, right? Now, well, let's say, so they have this coordinate. Uh, we need to calculate the top left of the hover box and the size of hover box, right? So top left of the uh, hover pause and hover dim, right? So uh, I, I can say that hover dimensions are uh, 28 by 28 plus 14 is 42, right? So it's 42 pixels high, so it's a, a tile and a half up and it's one tile in the width, right? So we have to go from Oh yeah, we, we need sprite pause, which will be just a value from the datum. Um, the oops, what, what uh, how how is it? Yes. Um, so we are going to create a pause from minus x sprite pulse 14 right and this is x coordinate and minus y uh, sprite pulse 28 right so uh, because we are uh, I, I have to to be able to show you what i'm doing right? uh, recording. so I'm, I'm here right so i uh, do minus 14 so I get here and then I do minus 28. So I get here. Actually, I had to do minus 42. Yeah. So I, I get here and then I do 28 and 42. So it's a rectangle that it's like starts at the bottom of the tile and uh, hovers over like half of the tile on the top. Right. So this is it. And uh, now uh, we have a condition, right? So when, when uh, this, well, we need a function to identify let's let's call it inside right uh, pause box pause box dim so uh, we need to identify if this position is inside this uh, box with these dimensions right and it, it is inside if and only if so the x coordinate of the pause is more bigger or equals than box pose, right? Same for y. And then we have uh, x coordinate of the pose is less than x coordinate of the box plus width of the box thing. And same goes for the for the height, right? So this uh, this tells us if the point is inside. Now when um, core inside, so if screen pause, this pause, right? So this is our mouse pause, 
is, is inside uh, our boss over beam. So this is uh, with a box. All right, let's actually print inside. Oh yeah, let's say screen pose hover pose hover beam. Um, and let's let's print the e of a datum, right? So this way, uh, save. Yes, and we need a console. So each time it here's input is undefined. Great. So why, how is it undefined? Did you make any mistake? No, oh, it compiles, right? Uh, maybe I should. I need to recompile this. Let's reload. Okay, so now now it is inside the unit uh, with ID twenty eight, as you can see, right? It's different position. Uh, as we go up, it's it sprints to. Okay, I, I yeah probably should um, remove that. Uh, this is not helpful. Not much help. Okay, so now it's inside twenty six, right? So oh, okay. now it's inside twenty eight. As we move over, it, it becomes inside too because uh, they overlap, right? So the hover from this guy overlaps the hover from this guy, right? So in, they are both in, inside both of them, right? Um, yeah, so uh, what do we do? We, we, we take the first, right? So the first, oh, no, no. Okay, so if you remember in in the DOM version, we had to sort datums from top to bottom so that uh, we, 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 ch we check hover for the bottom first and then we move up, right? So in case of overlapping, we should be taking the, the bottom one, the bottom guy, right? Uh, to do that here, well, we basically do, do have to sort, uh, sort by uh, value. Mm -hmm. And triggers, right? So, and we only need to take first. Well, hmm. yeah, something like that. Okay. So we, yes. So let's see. So now it prints 20, 28 first and twenty six later, right? And actually, we have uh, those mixed, but yeah. Now prints. I don't know. It prints it in some random order, but whatever. Um, yeah. So we need to sort that. So here I'm going to. Well, oh yeah, I'm going to use a trick, right? So yeah, no, no, no. Let's say. Let's say we really have to identify sprite, which is Howard, right? So sprite entity ID. And so do seek uh, just iterates, right, and just prints. Uh, what we need instead is something like sum. So sum finds the first element that matches some predicate. And in our case, so the collection is this, right? And the predicate would be fan data. The predicate would be like that. Let uh, blah blah blah. Let that when this we return data, right? Uh, sorry, we will return the e from data, so we don't need the whole data, right? Uh, we need the whole data. We don't. Um, yeah. So the idea is like like this. So. Over this collection of datums, we run this function that takes data and uh, well, collects, calculates this v value, the sprite pose, right? Then uh, hover pose, then hover dim, um, and when it's inside, we return e datum, right? 
will return the e value. So it, it will be sprite entity ID. So this one actually we can move up here uh, because it's a constant. Well, we don't do additional locations. So we and now when some sprite e ID, right? This is the first one. We print it. So this way we only print the first one. Let me make sure of that. So right now we're on the inside 28. We're still on the inside 28, but as we move over, we become inside 26, uh, inside 28. Uh, those are not interesting. Those two are interesting because we swapped them, if you remember. So now we're inside 10, and now only now we're inside 12. Yeah. So now we're inside 10 again. And so this is this is fine. So they they swap the IDs so to make sure that we do sorting, right? So it's, if we don't do sorting here, if we disable it, you can see that, well, for example, here we inside number ten, but as we move over, we should oh, no, it still works fine for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I didn't swap them. Maybe they luckily come in the correct order. No, they don't. They don't really. Okay, let me see. So this one is 12, this one is 10. So we should pick up 10 first, right? Yeah, it should become pick up 10 first, which again, yeah, we have to do this reverse thing. Okay. But without sorting. So now we are picking up 12 even though we are still hovering over 10 yes but if we sort we do everything correctly okay so we're picking up 10 here yeah this is fine okay great and now now what do we do so we have identified the sprite we now we have to emulate the events of uh like mouse enter and mouse leave right so mouse enter is when you first hover over one element and mouse leave is when you leave it oh, okay so to do that we will have to do that right and instead of doing that we are going to well we are going to reset hover sprite eid with Right, yeah, yeah. And we do this unconditionally. So even if this is new, we reset this with new, right? This is what we want. Actually. Now in reload, we, we want this. So we want add watch over hover sprite EID. Um, well, hover. Or we can do like mouse enter uh, so we take as i said we take the function of four arguments the old and new right but uh, mouse enter we only interested uh, when new is not new right and old is not equal to new so when we have something to enter right so the new is not new uh, write it like this and we uh, on different elements still right so the element has changed it will, maybe it was now maybe not but whatever when it happens it means we are over the element and if you remember what we have to do in that case we have to call a hover with a stack right so we call model slash hover and now we need a stack right and to, to get a stack it might be so we first, so we only have EID, right? So let me call sprite. Oh, well, let me call first uh, model DB. Now sprite would be something like DS entity DB new, right? And um, well, yeah, and uh, the the stack, the stack is going to be stack slash uh, unit dash sprite unit dash sprite but walk backwards right so from sprite because we're going from sprite so we have sprite but we have to go back to stack so it's it says okay uh, this will make it hover and another one we need to also mouse leave 
Oh, let me just define on mouse leaf. Yes. And we take sprite EID. So, yeah, and we do something like this. On mouse leaves, we have to do this and unhover, right? Like this. And this is on mouse leaf, this is on mouse enter, and instead we do hover, right? So mouse enter, and here we on mouse leaf alt. So if alt was not new and new is different from alt, that means we leave we are leaving something, right? Leave. So this is one watcher in our case. And this is in our, another watcher. So in this case we send on mouse enter. Yeah. Okay, this should make it. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Yeah, so something doesn't work. So there is a new somewhere. There is by should be sprite EID. There should be sprite EID as well. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it seems to work. So you can see I hover and it uh, switches correctly. So if uh, they overlap, it switches correctly and everything works. So yeah, it's, I'm pretty satisfied it like <laughs> worked the first time. Well, the only thing we didn't really covered is uh, rotate. Uh, let me just handle rotate. I uh, will have to think about it, but uh, it shouldn't be that hard, I hope. Okay, uh, so we did that and the hover works, right? Let me also implement select. So selection is not that hard as all, at all. Also, uh, we will have to do on click like this on mouse click, right? So on click, uh, yes, this is this part is simple. Uh, the only thing left is on mouse click. Let's say we want an event, right? So we have an event here. Okay, so the thing that I want to implement actually is. I want to be able to get sprite entity ID from event. Right. Uh, and to do that, I will need probably all of that. So basically, it's, it's that function. Right. So I will just return something like like this. Okay. And. Uh, Do you say anything? Yeah, you scrape us. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. So uh, this function uh, well identifies right ID by event. Well, only I use E here. I I should be using event instead, right? So on mouse click we let sprite EID a being <coughs> sprite ID from E like this, right? And the rest is yeah, pretty close to that. So we take the database, we define sprites, track, and select. So this is code we use for you. I hope it's all clear. Let's see if it works. Uh, click here, yeah, yeah, they become selected for error. Great, so it works, it seems to work. And yeah, we have to handle the screen rotation, but before we move over there, let me just, uh, so yeah, let's see, let's see. So I, the only thing I want to do is probably measure the performance of the sprite EID, right? So, hmm. Yeah, let me call it like here. Time. Let's see if it if it's fine. Yeah, it's it's probably fine, right? 
Uh, anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the performance uh, is less than millisecond, sometimes two millisecond. Actually, if we run it in Chrome instead of uh, Firefox, we would see uh, the millisecond, uh, sub millisecond times. And Chrome does that for us. Uh, Firefox doesn't. Now you can see, so uh, it's, yeah, some some performance, right? So what I'm going to do is optimize this a little bit because we're using data script. We can actually optimize this quite a bit. So you can see here that we're using sort by by value, right? And yeah, and reverse. So to do that, we first has to like fetch all the datums, uh, materialize them in memory, basically create a new sequence in here, then uh, well, sort the sequence, uh, creating new sequence, which is sorted now, and then reverse it, We're basically creating the third sequence, right? So we, we create three intermediate sequences here, right? Uh, but the data script is a database, so it has already indexes which are sorted, right? Uh, so we can actually utilize it. So we're going to go make this this property indexed. Let's go to model and this is false, right? So we just add index here, which means it will be indexed, which means it will be in a v a t index, right? Like this. Uh, the property of it is that it's already sorted by value, right? So the attribute is the same everywhere, so it's already sorted by value, so we can remove that, right? And by removing that, we're actually doing quite a lot. Let's see why it disappeared, everything disappeared, I don't know. We're actually doing quite a lot, and uh, from the look at it, it's, it's, it's better, right? Uh, it's a little bit at least. So we so we removed sort, uh, this is already good, so we don't have to sort, right? Uh, but the other thing is reverse. So if you print, let me just print the type of this. Oh, sorry, I keep. So as you can see, it's iterator, right? But data script also supports reverse iterators. So when you call reverse on here, right? It's now reverse iterator, so it doesn't um, it doesn't go into the closures reverse gen generic reverse. Instead, what it does is uh, creates another iterator that basically evokes the sequence backwards. So it's it it doesn't even realize that sequence. So uh, let's say this data is in data script line in data script. It basically just uh, looks it up and points at it and just uh, iterates over it. Right? In the, all the difference it makes, it just iterates to forward or backwards. Right? There's also RSeq, I think. Let me see what RSeq is. So, yeah, RSeq as well. I, I remember that enclosure actually reverses what doesn't utilize it, but RSeq does. So, probably better use RSeq here. And so the, the, the benefit here is that, is that we don't create reverse sequence as well, right? So uh, by we still sort them in correct order, we still iterate them in correct order, but we now don't um, create any additional sequences. So when we uh, iterate, this can, can be improved even further. Right? So let's say so as you can see, so for example here, let's let's see, let's print. Let's print. Uh, so the count uh, obviously takes time, right? So it, it's going to take some time, but so we always walk over all ten of the sprites, right? This is because well, uh, the datums. Yeah, we have to walk over each one to identify our uh, like uh, who are we over with, right? So what can we? Uh, do here. So as I said, it is already sorted. So for example, when mouse is over here, uh, we can only possibly hover within like a rectangle of uh, hover rectangle up, one hover rectangle up, one hover rectangle down, one left, one right. right? So there is a certain rectangle over here which we uh, uh, which if a unit is in that rectangle, then we could theoretically hover over it. Otherwise, we 
couldn't, right? So uh, even in theory. So if we identify this rectangle, we can actually, um, well, we can, what we can, what, what can we do? <laughs> uh, we can just create a much smaller subset of, of the sprites. Right? Uh, there's still 10, so it's not that much at all, but, but, but still, I, I just want to like to show how, how great, um, Sorry, how, <laughs> how great data script is, of course. Okay, uh, let's uh, do that. So to do that, well, uh, they started uh, by y coordinate first, the x coordinate later, last, last right? So uh, what? So we can only we can what what I can do with data script is we can take a subset of the index, right? By starting from some element, ending by some element. Uh, so we can only cover the, the subset of the index, right? So uh, in our case, it should be like, instead of doing this, okay, let me do So times probably is not that interesting, but whatever. Uh, we can return later. So now let's say I comment this out. So to do that, we have, we can do, oh, no, yeah, let's get rid of the RSEQ here. Because we don't care about it really. So, ds, okay, I, I forgot the name because it's rarely used. Let's look at, let's look it up. Okay, yes, yeah, so I have to reconnect my VPN. Um, it's utter index or index utter or something like this. This is not what I need. Um, after, 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 what is it? There is datums, and next to it, index range. Yeah, it's index range. Okay, so index range is specified database attributes start and end. So, and it will look like, look up all datums that uh, have this attribute and its value between start and end. Right. So we need that. Okay, so it's gonna be index range db. So we don't you don't specify the index. It has to be indexed already. Uh, you specify the attribute uh, as here, and then you specify the values before and the values after, right? So it's like like this, right? So in our case, the pause. Uh, so the first position is gonna be x, or maybe any. So we only gonna filter by the y coordinate. So and y coordinate could be from uh, minus y screen pause for video, right? Mm. Right or not right? Okay, so let me just and this is gonna be three fourteen and uh, here it's gonna be well, plus 40, basically. Okay, uh, it's, actually, it's actually not zero, of course. So we, we should start from like the minimal uh, coordinate that we could have is here. Uh, uh, we could possibly intersect with anything. So it should be probably 59. But again, it doesn't really matter because uh, uh, this will be will matter. This one won't really. It's right? so 314 minus 59, 255. So this coordinate is probably 255, whatever, right? And yeah, so this is our index. Again, this is, we are not, um, this is a linear sequence. This is not like a two dimensional uh, subset, right? Okay, let me just uh, not to be confusing here. This is uh, just a linear sequence, but it happens if y coordinates match, we compare the x, right? But we, we don't expect that. So in our case, now it prints that when we hear it, okay, let's first check that hover works, right? Oh. Okay, and if it's now, uh, yeah, and if it's now, we don't have to do this. Or probably we have to do something like this. Okay. Uh, and uh, here I'm printing how, what? Uh, 
Okay, now, now it's better. Yeah, here I'm picking how many datums we go over. So when we're here, we only cover like six sprites, like eight, six, right? And here we only cover four. So probably this is four bottom ones, right? Yeah. Now, my, I'm, I'm now actually thinking that maybe, well, no, I, maybe my, yeah, my formula should be, my formula should be all right. Uh, again, I can add here like 59 and 255, it was right. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, so here we should, oh yeah, we still have to. Well, yeah, again, it's not a two dimensional filter, it's one dimensional filter. So, but the, but the benefit is we, we, are, we are testing much less sprites than we have to. Right? So, well, not much less, but but a little bit less. And we don't have to do like anything. It's not more efficient or less efficient than before, right? So it's just uh, like taking the whole index uh, for attribute and part of that index is actually the same complexity operation because uh, you have to do binary lookup anyway for, for the boundaries. So yeah, so there it is. A uh, very, very, very optimized uh, version of, of selection and hovering, right? So, oh yeah, and now let's see if I could, uh, oh no, it's probably, it's gonna be boring, but yeah, so this, I'll just uh, leave it out of the video, but yeah, we have to cover this, so this, this doesn't work, obviously, because um, in here, here coordinates work differently, right? So screen position, scale. Well, well, we have to change that a little bit. Okay, let me let me think it over. Okay, maybe it's it's actually simple. Okay, let's say we pause if. Rotate, yes. If we have to rotate, if it was rotated, then it means we want post something something. Otherwise, we otherwise we use uh, original repos, right? And here we use repos prime. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so the position. Okay. Let me figure out. So if x is here. If you have a coordinate here, how does it translate? So, um, so the x coordinate will be i y coordinate, right? So there is no no transformation really. So the real x coordinate is gonna be what we have on screen as y. Yes. Okay, so. So this x is gonna be y from w pos, right? And y coordinate is gonna be screen. Okay, if we are here, is y coordinate should be zero. Last section screen is screen is minus x, right? And if you are here. Yeah, it should be a screen is minus x. Okay, so it's X W pos, and the screen is is well, it's <laughs> window client. We have that in JavaScript, right? Okay, um, it should be like that. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it seemed to work. <laughs> so it was uh, simpler than I than I was afraid. So yeah, we can we can rotate it all. Okay, great. This is this is fantastic actually. Just by translating coordinates. So yeah, we have the whole system. Uh, this, isn't this great? And we have uh, successfully implemented, like ported everything that we had in 
In here, I've actually uh, put it in its own uh, like subsystem, right? Here. So yeah, this is great, I think. I think this is great. We don't print anything anymore, right? We don't print. Hope we don't. Because yeah, we should. Okay, great. So we don't print anything external. So this is it for today, right? So yeah, uh, we we now uh, completely on par with what we have before, and we're actually using a little bit more efficient hover system, uh, which is also a great thing, I think. Okay, that's it. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.